Welcome back to the Woodworking for Mere Mortals workshop. Sponsored by me. This is one big cabinet. I don't know, I just didn't think, I just didn't think it was gonna be this big when I was looking at the space up there in the pantry, but here it is. At least I can work on it up here on my workbench now and not have to crawl around on my hands and knees like a barbarian. So I'm just finishing up these shelf pin holes on the front side. Now I can make the French cleat for the top. The French cleat is just a board ripped at a 45 degree bevel. So one of those strips I'm gonna hang on the wall and this one I can mount up here on the top of the cabinet. So once I mount this piece to the wall, the whole cabinet will just drop onto it like that. So instead of leveling the cabinet, which is really difficult on something this big, all you need to do is just level this cleat on the wall, drop the cabinet in place, and because of that 45 degree bevel, it actually gets tighter the more weight that goes on there and more firmly attached to the wall. I'm attaching this solid strip with no bevel to the bottom of the cabinet. This will just fill up that recessed area so that I can drive a couple of screws into this to further stabilize the cabinet. So I cut eight of the adjustable shelves so this is going to work out really great. That gives me plenty of storage. This is the kind of shelf support I got. The shelves just set down on there and then these go into the holes but they make these that have a hole in the side here so that you can secure the shelf in place. I, they didn't have any of those at the hardware store so I'm just gonna have to drill my own holes so that it'll fit into the back, I can just put a screw. Maybe, you know, each shelf doesn't need all four of them screwed in place, but it'll just help prevent the shelves from sliding off these when you grab something. So I'm just using my drill press and this wooden hand clamp to hold these in place. And I'm drilling the hole through this way rather than this way because the exit part of that hole leaves kind of a raised crown there and I can knock that down when I countersink that hole. Now I've got my countersink bit in place. And that'll just let the screw head fit in there flush. So again, I don't have to drive a screw in every single one of those. I think if I just put them like in the two front ones, that should be enough just to, you know, if there's a bag of rice on there or something, I pull it out. I don't want the whole, the whole shelf to come along with it. We store a lot of heavy stuff in there, mostly canned goods. So I'm glad this thing is finally gonna be sturdy enough to hold it all. Oh, and speaking of canned goods, a lot of the comments I got in that last video were really bizarre. They, people noticed that this cabinet, it goes in that, in that laundry room and then the cat's litter boxes are down below and I guess people were grossed out. Like, how can you keep food where you keep your litter boxes? Well, it's, it's canned food. I don't know how the litter box litter is gonna get up in there. We clean that out every day. People worry about weird things, but honestly, we just don't have any more space to put anything. And so, you know, that's the only place that we can keep those litter boxes in, is in that, and it closes up and they go through their little hole to get in there. <sighs> Thank you.
Oh, something I wanted to point out in my last video is on making the widths of these shelves. When you're making wide cabinets, try to avoid having a long shelf in there. Even with three quarter inch plywood, over time that will sag. I used to think that, well, as long as I use plywood, it'll be strong enough. <laughs> it's not. And I found that about three feet is the widest you want to go with a board. So that's why I have the center di divider down the middle and then shelves on both sides. If you really want to see saggy shelves, and who doesn't, then <laughs> use some MDF. MDF will definitely sag. That's what, if you buy shelves from like Ikea or any of those mass produced furniture places, they're almost always made with an MDF core. And if you get anything that has long shelves on that, in a few years, there's just gonna be a big bow. Or you could just make shelves out of steel. Although, and there, you know, there's always exceptions to every rule, it seems like. One thing you can do to help avoid sagging of shelves is to put a face frame on them. Usually solid wood, a strip across the front, that'll help keep it supported. I was thinking about putting a face frame all on this cabinet and then I'd put them on the shelves, but then, you know, this is in a closet, nobody's gonna see it, it doesn't really matter. So, I'm just using the exposed plywood edges and painting everything. I'm gonna secure two ends of it with these toggle bolts that go into the drywall, and then where I can find the studs, I'm gonna add some long screws here and here, so this thing's gonna be super sturdy. And the nice thing about using those toggle bolts first is that it gives me some wiggle room there so that I can level this whole thing before I tighten it down. The next thing I need to do is start designing a storage unit for the other side of this laundry closet. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.